Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest on our show. She is the amazing Dr. Stephanie, and she is all about the power of life and attaining the goals that you deserve. And she's here today to show you some great techniques and tools uh, to how to attain everything you deserve in life. And she's also an author. She has a great book out that she's going to tell you about. So I'm very excited to have you on the show, Dr. Stephanie. Um, this is an honor for us. I just love everything you do. I love how you you focus on powerful women and helping women to achieve power in their life and achieve everything they set their minds to. So can you tell people about a little about yourself and what you do? Sure. Well, as, as you mentioned, I'm Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes, and by day, I'm a healthcare innovation attorney, but I'm always the liberated lawyer, and mm -hmm. I believe in helping high-achieving women experience a life that is fit, fulfilled, and free, and I believe that every woman deserves to be successful and fulfilled. We don't have to choose between being either or. Mm -hmm. And I love helping to equip them with strategies that help them to achieve everything they desire and deserve in life. I love that. You know, there are so many women out there that are high achievers and there's so many women out there that want to be high achievers mm -hmm. and they just don't know where to begin. They don't know if they could actually do it. I have met so many women who have the qualities of being high achieving women and that's what their goals and their desires and their dreams are set for. And they're just afraid. They don't know where to begin. They don't know if they could do it. They don't know, you know, um, they're afraid to like share their voice with the world. You know, how do you help women, you know, get to that point in life where they can go from wanting to be a high achieving woman to actually becoming a high achieving woman? Yeah. So that's a great question. And the way I like to describe it is I like to help women to live life in the end. Mm -hmm. And as I alluded to earlier, we don't have to choose between being successful or fulfilled. We can be successful and fulfilled. Yes. And living life in the end is not only a concept, but it's a strategy around using the power of our choices to create the life we desire and deserve. Because everything that we say we want or everything that we desire, everything that is possible for us we can do it. Yeah. And sometimes we get overwhelmed because it's difficult. And yeah. it is, you know, mm -hmm. being a high achieving woman is difficult at times. Yeah. You will face difficulties and it can be difficult yeah. to have everything you desire and deserve, but it is always possible. Mm -hmm. And I like to help women to use the power of our choice of their choices by relying on their five B's that make it really easy for you. Mm -hmm. So there are five B's to living life in the end. The first are your beliefs. And you must first believe that what you desire is actually possible and that you can and do have the capacity to achieve it. So that's the first thing, your beliefs. The second thing is your board. And this literally uh, encompasses the people in your lives because our lives are influenced by others, the people yes. that we have relationships with, whether that is our spouse, significant other, our friends, our family, all of those people influence us and can inform our beliefs. Mm -hmm. And as a high achieving woman, you need a team. So it's all about building your relationships. Yes. Third B is your brilliance. Every one of us has a way of accomplishing excellence. It's our systems. It's the strategies that we use. And when we are intentional about recognizing how we achieve our brilliance, we can distill that to systems that mm -hmm. enable us to replicate that in different areas of our lives. Yes. Then there is getting big mad. And this, I think, is really important because when you are faced with difficulties or it's it's challenging. You can get a little mad, meaning you get you know upset. You get your feelings hurt. You get yeah. um, uh, anxious about what's going on. But when you get big mad, is when you develop strategies around being motivated and determined. Because mm -hmm. we all know that we will face challenges, 
when we are intentional in creating strategies that help us to remain motivated and determined, yeah. when those challenges arise, we don't get derailed as quickly and as permanently as sometimes disappointment can. And then the final B is your beckoning light. What is your why? Why is it important for you to have everything you desire and deserve? Why is it important for you to be successful and fulfill? What is your purpose? But yeah. when you have all of these things combined, it allows you to achieve everything you desire and deserve. I love that. I love that. Now, when it comes to belief, do you know what's the best ways people, you know, can you know, sometimes people believe, but they they're a little bit unsure mm -hmm. and they're on the cusp of, you know, they mm -hmm. believe they have the ability to help others. They believe that they could be a high achieving woman. They, you know, but there is there is that that doubt, that mm -hmm. insecurity that yeah. holds them back. You know, yeah. when it comes to the belief system, what are some suggestions that you have that you could, you know, share with the world, you know, and our listeners on how we could overcome and how we could actually have a strong belief system within ourselves mm -hmm. that will shine and resonate to the world? Right. I think the first thing is to realize that you don't have anything to lose, but your success and your fulfillment. Yes. So when you look at risks from that perspective and you recognize that everything you desire and deserve has a risk, yes. you know, there's, there's always a risk that it's not going to work out the first time or the second time or the third time. Yes. Or there's always a risk that you could try something and fail. And I think we have to overcome the fear of failure and yes. recognize that it's just like any experiment where we are our own scientists and yes. we're doing research and no research is accomplished without an experiment. And some experiments have the result that you set out to have. And sometimes the experiment has a different result, but it's still valuable. And yeah. so I think that's the first thing is getting over the fear of failure. Right. And recognizing that anything you desire is on the other side of taking a risk and you plan as best as you can and you try it. Yes. And if it works, you keep it going and you yes. improve it and make it better. And if it doesn't work, you learn from it and you adjust. But right. I think that's, you know, something that because we're high achievers, mm -hmm. we're used to achieving. Yeah. Things and everything's always successful. And we want to keep up that track record and doing something different, taking risks definitely can kind of mess up this track record, but the end result is you being becoming a better and higher version of yourself. And you just got to be willing to take that risk. Yes, I agree with you completely. And when it comes to your circle of friends, a oh. lot of times, you know, you know, people don't realize, but they are very influenced by that circle of friends and family that they surround themselves with. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, I believe in the positive energy and the negative energy. And when you have those people that either are, you know, not high achievers or they are, you know, they have their own negativity within them, mm -hmm. it kind of pulls you down, you know, and right. they say that look around, you, you know, your circle and those are the people you will become. And if right. you want to become a high achiever, then you yes. need high achieving people surrounding you. Right. You think. Yes, I think that is so important. And that's why like that second B is about that board, which is your circle of influence. And you know, we have to be intentional in two respects. As you've mentioned, we have to learn and understand how our current circle, how are they influencing us? What are their opinions or how are their opinions and thoughts and mindset impacting us? Yes. The second thing is recognizing who do I need to be around to improve my own mindset or to um, improve the likelihood that I will go further. And this is very hard for people because sometimes the people we love aren't necessarily the best influencers. Yeah. They aren't necessarily, they may not necessarily have the best intention. And yeah. sometimes it's not that they're malicious, but they're fearful. They want to protect us. And so they, they want to keep us safe. And sometimes that safety or that comfort is really holding us back. Yeah. So we have to become um, comfortable with and be empowered by 
recognizing the influences that people have on us and, and recognizing that the people we love, say our family, we may not quote, get rid of them, but we are intentional about how we allow them to influence us. And then we align ourselves with people who have done more than what we've done or are can serve as a community to mm-hmm. help us go forward. But that is something that we have to be extremely intentional about. Yeah. Being a person that adds value to others because it's got to be reciprocal. Yes. But uh, just being intentional and being mindful of what type of influence does this person have? What mm-hmm. type of circle do I need? And I always think about it. You know, I always have uh, ways of keeping up with things. Five C's. <laughs> <laughs> the first, you know, you think about, you know, who are your cheerleaders? Who are the people in your life that are going to encourage you? You need those, but you don't need everybody to be a cheerleader. Yes. A coach and a counselor. And yeah. a counselor is someone, you know, as a mentor, they may teach you something, but a coach is someone who's going to hold you accountable. Yeah. Then you need champions, the people who are going to speak for you when you're not in the room. And then you need connectors who are going to help you connect to other people who are going to be good influences. So that's something that you can take away to think about how to cultivate your circle of influence. Right. Now, when you have those family members that maybe want to protect you, or you have people who maybe even be might be envious or jealous of your success and they may want to discourage you. And, you know, cause they, a lot of times I, I, I talk with people and they, they notice that when they've gotten to that next level and they've elevated to the next mm-hmm. level, there are people who kind of draw away from them yeah. and, you know, and you see that a lot, but mm-hmm. when it comes to, you know, those people, you know, how do you do, do you basically maybe not see them as much or do you kind of like they are there in your lives, but they're just not playing as big of a role as they want. Right. Right. And I think it's a combination of things. There, there are some people, family members, loved ones, spouses, significant others, friends, you know, there are some people who are so toxic that honestly, the only way that you can shield yourself from their negativity is to disassociate with them. Yeah. And that's something that's a painful decision to make, right. but it's sometimes some something that's important. And it's not always permanent, mm-hmm. you know, but it is something that you have to do to protect yourself. Right. Then there are other people who are not necessarily toxic, but again, you understand how they can be a part of your life. So you don't talk to them about your your business goals or your professional goals. You have meaningful conversations, but about things that they're comfortable with or things that, you know, you have in common. And I think, you know, it's important to just recognize that, you know, when you go to different levels, I had someone to explain this to me many years ago and it made so much sense. It's kind of like thinking about rocket boosters. Yes. When a rocket goes out of orbit in order for it to soar, it has to release the boosters. Otherwise it'll fall back down to the earth. Right. We have to think of our, the people in our lives, like those boosters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in order for us to go to the next level, everybody can't come along. And it doesn't mean that you abandon them or you despise them or otherwise, you know, leave someone who has loved you for your entire life, but you recognize where they may fit or not in your life and and where you're going next. Perhaps they don't go, but you have some type of relationship with them. I like that. Yes, that's that's a very healthy way of looking at it where they're not you know, isolated from your life, but they, you, they have a healthy relationship with them, just not on certain topics that you would discuss with other people. Right. Right. And I think it's just important to be mindful of how your news is received and not everybody can receive it well, because sometimes it, it strikes insecurities in themselves because you may be doing something that they desire to do, but don't have the courage to do. And Rather than admitting that and making changes in their own life, they want to keep you where they are. Because if you go, then now, you know, it agitates perhaps something in them or or makes them aware of perhaps something that they feel is a shortcoming. Yeah. And, um, you know, they may try to just let's let's just stay comfortable together. Yeah. And you have to advocate for yourself and say, 
you know, this may not be where you want to go. I still love you or we can still be friends. We can still hang out. But this is something that I must do for myself. Right. Exactly. Now tell us more about the brilliance section of it. You know, I'd like to learn more about that. Yes. And this is, you know, you can call it your secret sauce or how the sausage is made. (laughs) You know, And, and I'd like to put it in very simple terms. You know, everything that we do is a system. And, you know, I I think about like the way I get dressed in the morning, I get dressed in the same order. I do, you know, my, my toiletries and everything, you know, everything is done in the same order. Yeah. Well, to make that process easier, I organize my bathroom cabinet around how I get dressed in the morning. That's the system. That's brilliance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything that we do that we excel, where we excel, there's a way, there's a, a a methodology that has allowed us to achieve that excellence. And when we're mindful of it, we can replicate it so that we're able to recreate that excellence in other areas. So we have to stop and think about, you know, why do I do things this way? When I am the best or mm-hmm. when I have the best outcomes, what have I done prior to that? What have I not done? Who's the team? It it involves asking yourself powerful questions. Right. And when you ask yourself powerful questions, you are able to reveal information that allows you to have informed decisions. Right. And decisions are very powerful because this is your, you know, I, I love to talk about the root of the word decide, which is side, which means to cut off. Okay. And when you make a decision, you cut off all other options, but the one that's going to move you forward. And so you start with asking yourself how, why, you know, what creates this excellence? And then you begin to turn that into a system that you're able to replicate that either for that particular thing or translate it into other areas of your life. I like that because a lot of people are indecisive, you know, and a lot mm-hmm. of people, you know, that's what, you know, what a lot of times gets people stuck in certain areas is because they're right. indecisive and they don't know what the right decisions to make, but they do know within themselves, they just haven't right. really examined themselves within. And once they start to, like you said, go to the root cause and cut off the options and really think about the mm-hmm. who, what and why kind of thing, they come to really, you know, kind of close it off to a certain few and then they're able to make a more decisive decision right right and it's important to be be confident in your decisions because not every decision is going to lead to the exact outcome that you desire but you've got to make a decision yes commit to it now that doesn't mean that you're inflexible or you are you're not agile to respond to your environment or respond to circumstances but when you have a clear goal that's why it's important to have that beckoning light yeah it's like the north star and Mm -hmm. uh, if you think about a compass you know it always points north yeah and so when you have that you're able to adjust and be agile and respond in a way that doesn't take you off track but you've got to make a decision you've got to decide I love it. I love it. And that's a great way of looking at it. So, you know, if you look at it like that, it makes decision making a little bit easier because, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times people struggle with making decisions, you know, because they're a little bit unsure what is the right decision. I don't make the wrong decision and so forth. And you won't know until you try. And that's the scary part, but it's also the exciting part. What are you going to discover? What is going to result. And until you take a step, until you try, you don't know. And inaction is a choice as well. But we have to be careful that inaction is not a default choice. Right. You're making active choices. I like that. I like that. And, and you know, it, it goes back to, you know, the beginning where we, overcoming your fear, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's okay if you make a decision and it might not be the best decision, you know, you've learned from it 
and mm -hmm. then you try again. And that right. fear of, of not, you know, making the right decision or failure or, you know, worried about this, that, and the other thing. Well, if it doesn't work out now, I've learned. And now let's see what my other options are and keep moving forward and, right. with, you know, looking at things. Now, when it comes to like um, strategy and you call the big mad, you mm -hmm. know, when it comes to strategy yeah. is... I always feel like strategy is very important that we always should create a strategy for ourselves and, and mm -hmm. set goals in that strategy. And I don't know how you feel about it, but it's, you know, thinking about where you want to be, mm -hmm. what you want to achieve, you know, where do you see yourself in six months? Where do you want to see yourself in a year from now? Mm -hmm. Where would you like to see yourself three years from now? And really creating a constructive strategy to get right. you on that track. Now, what's your definition of strategy and, and how do you implement it? Right. Well, I think, you know, strategy involves kind of two parallel paths. And a lot of times we focus on one path and not the other. The most obvious path is the thing that you want to do. What is the place you want to be? What is the goal you want to achieve? Where do you want to be in six months? Right. And that's very important to identify that and articulate it because sometimes you may not be able to say exactly what it is you desire, but you know that it's something different. But the, the closer you can get to specificity, the better. Yes. But identifying the plan, being realistic, what is it going to take? What team do you need? What resources do you need? What tools do you need? And then asking yourself, how do you get there? So that's one path yeah. is identifying the thing. Mm -hmm. The harder path that sometimes is not as obvious is who do you need to be in order for that goal to, to be accomplished? Mm, I like that. And many times we get so focused on the tactics of mm -hmm. This is the thing I need to do. I need to buy this. I need to invest in that. I need to go here, do this. And we don't really focus on how we need to change. You know, what yeah. do we need to do in terms of our mindset? Yeah. Our, are our beliefs working for us? Or are they holding us back? Yes. So uh, what do we need? Who do we need to be to be able to have the connections that are going to help us to, to move forward? And, and really be mindful around shaping yourself to become the woman you need to be in order for those goals to actually come to fruition. Because if you are not who you need to be, even when those opportunities arise, yeah. you won't have the capacity to be able to either take advantage of it or mm -hmm. to, to sustain the success. Right. So you always have to look at those paths in parallel. Yeah. What do you need to do? But who do you need to be? I like that a lot. What? And then the who. I like right. that a lot. I like that. Now, when you talk about, you talked about the why at the end, when you mm -hmm. mentioned that intro, and you talked about, the, you know, knowing your mission, knowing your purpose, mm -hmm. understanding, you know, who you are basically, you know, because once you understand your purpose, you know, you have a clearer mind where you can create that strategy and mm -hmm. you can you learn how, you know, what is that strategy? What do I need and who do I need to be? So right. when it comes to that, why, what, what is some constructive advice you can give to the listeners? Yes. Cause I, I think it's important to think of it from the perspective of like, what's your mission statement? And, mm -hmm. you know, Many years ago, I determined that my mission statement was to inspire excellence in others. Mm -hmm. And that really has stuck with me. It How I manifest that or how that shows up in real life has evolved over years. But yes. ultimately, in any situation that I'm in, I desire to inspire excellence in others because I want to receive the same and I want to be surrounded by and a part of excellence yeah. and you know in my legal career that means something mm -hmm. and it, it it impacts you know how I interact with my clients yes but in my purpose work because my healthcare innovation attorney work that's what I do for a living and I love it I really enjoy it yeah but that's not who I am 
Right. I am the liberated lawyer. That's why I use that because <laughs> I am a woman who truly believes my mission is to help other women to live a life that is fulfilled, fit, and free. Yes. And so being able to articulate that helps me to make better choices. Right. Is this thing that I'm doing tied to my mission, my why, my purpose, who I say I am? Right. Or is it going to take me further away? Or is it going to be, it may be, be something good to do, but it's not directly related to this. Yes. So then I have to be very mindful about how I allocate resources to something that's not necessarily directly tied to my why. So, right. you know, we have to ask ourselves, you know, kind of ask two questions. When I am at my best, what are the outcomes that I'm able to achieve without thinking about? Mm -hmm. And when you really begin to capture what those attributes are, what those activities are, you can begin to distill what is your why? What is your purpose? How do you show up? Right. And sometimes we get focused on a career. And certainly that is an aspect of it, but we are more than our jobs. Oh, yeah. 100%. And how we show up in our workplace, whether that's as an entrepreneur or in corporate government, whatever. Yeah. You know, there are certain transferable skills that are directly tied to who we are and what our purpose is. Yes. And so it's really important to be thoughtful and to exercise the power of like meditation where you're able to still your mind and yes. think. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to be in solitude where you are able to hear your own thoughts. Yes. Other times you can work with a coach who can help you to identify that. Because sometimes, as I like to say, it's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. Yes. And that's something that a coach has the ability to do. They're not emotionally tied to your outcome. Right. They, they can see you objectively because they're yeah. not in the frame. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you work with a coach. Um, right. Sometimes you may have a trusted friend who has that capacity. Yeah. And that's, and that's important to remember is your friend may be awesome, but not everyone has the capacity to help you in the way that you need. Right. And plus, you know, they're going to be a little jaded because they know you and yeah. they're, they're definitely going to be influenced by that. And so sometimes, you know, working with someone who doesn't, you know, know you personally, but has the ability to see who you are and listen objectively can be a way to yes. find your purpose. Oh, a hundred percent. I love that. I love that. Now you've written a book. Tell me yes. a little about the book that you've written. Yes. Well, this is my book, Disruptive Elevation, When Life Doesn't Go As Planned, but Goes Exactly As It Should. And um, I wrote this book actually during the pandemic, during 2020. <laughs> I, of course, as everyone else, you know, was really faced with a lot of questions that arose like during the pandemic. And, and the biggest question I had was, you know, is this really it? Yeah. And really thinking about how to ensure that my life had purpose. Yes. And to ensure that, Everything that I did, you know, really was tied to a purpose and um, that I was able to, to, to have an impact. And so disruptive elevation is the concept of understanding that as the subtitle says, life doesn't always go as planned, but it goes exactly as it should. Right. And I've experienced a lot of disruption. I went through a divorce in 2016. Mm -hmm. I you know, had personal challenges. Um, I had almost a year long illness, not mm -hmm. COVID, but during 2020 had all of these issues and they were just big disruptions in my life. Right. And as with anyone, when faced with the disruption, I had the choice of either to allow that disruption to completely derail me mm -hmm. or I could learn from it and use it as a point of elevation. Yeah. And so this book is about encouraging women uh, mostly because you know that that's who my experience is with yeah and men can learn from this as well but it's about encouraging us to recognize that you know life is life is is agile and it doesn't always go the way you plan because I was a, a planner I had my life planned out 
from A to B to C to D. You know, I had this whole five, I did everything yeah. in five year plans. And to say the least, those five year plans didn't go the way I wrote them out. Yeah. Early on, I took that disruption as discouragement and just, you know, and got derailed by the disappointment. But I yeah. had to learn to be agile and to see that sometimes how we get there is not as important as getting there. And so yes. we get caught up in the how. I'm going to do it exactly this way. I'm going to do these things. And yes. when these things get out of order, we get discombobulated and we stop. Yes. And disruptive elevation is about embracing the disruptions, death of a loved one, uh, divorce, um, demotion. There are all these Ds out there. Yes, all yes. These things, all these disruptions that can happen, illness, that's not a D, but I, <laughs> I guess disease. There we go. There we go. But you know, there are all these different disruptions that can happen. And we must embrace that these disruptions weren't meant to derail us, but they truly were meant to elevate us because we learn from them. We get yes. stronger. And sometimes the way things turn out are far better yes. than we could have ever planned if we allow ourselves to embrace that change yes, and make it work for ourselves. So that's what 100%. the book is, is focusing on. I love that because there's so many people out there that do plan their lives and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you think, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and this is going to happen. And the next thing and the next thing, but yeah. life doesn't work like that. You know, it, it doesn't. I, you know, there's like daily obstacles that come our way. There are, you know, there are crises that enter our lives. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that, you know, when it comes to positivity, I think one of the things that got me through life was anything that disrupted my life. I tried to pull something positive out of it. Yes. And there is, if you look for it, I, I always believe that what you look for is what you see. Yes. And if you look for, oh my God, this is not going to work out. This is just awful. This is the worst thing that ever has happened to me. Then that's how you begin to color your thoughts, your behaviors, your actions. Yes. But when you say, all right, this sucks. It just <laughs> sucks. This is not what I wanted. This is not how I planned it, but how? Yes. How can I gain something from this? How can I learn from this? How can I turn this into something positive. Yes. So that's what disruptive ele elevation is all about is, I love it. you know, recognizing, you know, and because it's not poo poo in your thoughts. It's not like, <laughs> you know, everything is okay. It's not this positive, positive, positive. No, it's, it's about being realistic. Yeah. You have to deal with your emotions. If you're angry, be angry. Right. If you're sad, cry. If you are anxious, you know, embrace that anxiety and, and, and overcome it. Yes. But it's like, don't stop there. Don't right. Stay in your anger or sadness or disappointment or devastation. Yes. Just continuously ask yourself, how, how yes. am I going to get to my beckoning light? Right. I love it. I love it. That is amazing. Now, if you had to take our conversation today and you want to really focus on some valuable points, what would you like to emphasize to the listeners today? The biggest thing that I want to emphasize is that your life lies in the power of your choices. Mm -hmm. And in any situation, you are always faced with a choice yes. every time. Mm -hmm. And it's important for you to just embrace the power of your choices and realize that because you can choose, you're not powerless. Right. And then begin to make choices that align with your why. Mm -hmm. Everything you do is a choice and every choice is within your control. Even when you're having to face, you know, external factors, still how you respond is your choice. Yeah. And just continuously say to yourself, you know, this is difficult, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. How can I choose to move forward? I love it. I love it. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? Sure. Well, my, one of my favorite things to do is I like to work with women one-on-one. -on -one. So I offer like VIP in intensive days because as a high achieving woman, we don't have a lot of time Yeah, <laughs> that, you know, there are many programs out there where you can work for six weeks, six months, whatever. Yeah. But I know that many times we're ready to get it done. And yeah. so, 
using that, the em embracing that power of momentum. Yes. I like to work with women one-on-one -on -one, and I, I call it a it's kind of like a 24 hour transformation. It's not literally 24 hours, but it is a, a very intense and um, combination of days where we do some self-work, the women do groundwork, and then we come together and we walk away from that one day intensive with a blueprint that you can begin putting into action right now because we don't have time to wait. Weight broke the scale. <laughs> so I like helping women, again, to harness the power of their choices. Right. I do some coaching. I listen and we co-create a path forward for them. Oh, I love that. I love that. Now, when it when it comes to, um, you know, trying to contact you and, and, mm -hmm. and ways they can, you know, learn more about you, where are some of the places that they can go, like your website or any yes. social networks? I make it very easy for you. I'm Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes on all platforms. So you can go to my website drstephaniedbarnes.com and that gets you to my podcast it gets you to my blog but it also enables you to schedule what I call a revelation conversation mm -hmm. where we get a chance to sit down and talk and I listen and we walk through some of the things that you can begin doing right now right. to create the life you desire and deserve but Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes is the way to find me on all platforms oh I love it I love it now, is there any last minute thoughts that you'd like to share with the audience before we go? Yes. The, the last thing that I just want to share is to remember that your life is a product of your choices. And I pray that you always choose to be successful and fulfilled. You don't have to choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. And you can have everything you desire and deserve in life when you are able to harness the power of your choices and believe it's possible and align your actions with that belief. Oh, I love that. And I love how you mentioned that it's not just about success and it's just not about, you know, financial climbing up the ladder and X, Y, Z, but it's also how you feel inside and how you feel about mm. yourself. You know, yes. you have to have both. You, you right. want to feel good when you look in that mirror, you want to look at that reflection and you want to like who you see and you want to feel good about the person you're becoming. And that's yes. so very important. I it think. is. It is. And it's so, it's so possible. You can do it. Yes, you definitely can. Well, this has been amazing, Dr. Stephanie. You are an amazing woman. I'm, I thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your expertise, you know, and I think you've motivated a lot of women out there today. So thank you so much for everything you do. And thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you so much. As I always say, I hope you felt something. I hope I you did. learned something. And most of all, I hope you do something. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, you have a great day, Dr. Stephanie. Thank you. All so right. Much. You too. Thank bye you. Bye-bye.